everybody to this class. And I want to start off by going through a lot of the basics. Uh, we've got people in here that may have never opened up Photoshop or others that uh, have scratched around in Photoshop a little bit but felt overwhelmed. We've got others that may have taken several Photoshop classes, but uh, chances are most of you have not used Photoshop in a while if you've used Photoshop. And so some of this is going to be refresher while others are seeing some of this for the first time. Anyway, this is Photoshop uh, CC 2014. It, this is not the latest version. Uh, when I uh, do the face-to-face -face and project on the board, that will be CC 2014 latest version. But the things that we're going to be working on uh, you don't have to have the latest version. I choose to use that one uh, because there will be some that do have that and I want them to uh, be able to see that particular iteration, that version uh, of Photoshop and uh, <clears throat> I like to stay current so I can answer those questions. There are so many versions going back. I started in Photoshop 3 and that's not CC three uh, there was no CC3 but uh, version 3 which didn't ha didn't have uh, an undo uh, so to speak you could go back one step and that was it so uh, history wasn't a th uh, even a thought at that particular time uh, it was a very frustrating piece of software to use sometimes but it was still magic uh, to be able to work on images and do color corrections and and things like that so uh, Photoshop has a long history uh, there's been some changes that I haven't always agreed with such as the version that we're working with now uh, CC 2014 I don't agree with the fact that we have to rent software and that we never own it again um, but that's the way it is they've become so big and powerful now we don't have any choice Anyway, uh, you see this version that I have open here. Uh, <clears throat> it has always worked the same way. Uh, most of this at the top you see here has been unchanged. Um, if we want to open up a file inside of Photoshop, we can simply go to File, which is the first thing that's there, and File Open, and then we can go and find the image that we want to uh, work on wherever it may reside on our computer or if it's uh, on a thumb drive or whatever. Uh, we can also uh, use Bridge if we want to do that which I like to do a lot of times. So just let me open this up in Bridge real quick. Let's go to uh, Browse and Bridge in and you can see we, we have a footprint here that we can follow, a breadcrumb trail, I should say. Uh, you can see that we've gone from the desktop to the computer to the data drive to the photos folder to the baseball 6-5-2010. And then uh, we can look through the, the various photos that are here. And, and I can use my arrow key, and that's my right arrow key, left arrow key obviously goes back. Or I can hit my space bar and I can see these in full frame mode or full screen mode and I can still use my arrow keys to to go through now you can't see full screen mode <coughs> because uh, my uh, recording software if I record the entire screen my video is going to be uh, huge in file size so uh, that's not ideal to do so uh, if I hit spacebar again uh, it goes back to the normal viewing mode uh, but we're not going to get into uh, all the features that are in bridge right now we may uh, tackle some of that later but uh, the lots of things that we can do in bridge and if you look down here at the metadata uh, this is why one of the things that I like so much about bridge is we, we can see uh, lots of information about our shot uh, right here in the metadata we can tell uh, exactly what f-stop uh, this was taken at <clears throat> and the and the uh, actual shutter speed uh, 
how big the file is and, and so forth. The ISO or ISO that some people like to abbreviate it as. Uh, <clears throat> so this is very helpful uh, versus just going to uh, uh, file open, for example. If we just do a file open uh, and, and go to, uh, you know, try to do the same thing. If we go to D and go to photos, and let's see, and let's say we go to baseball 6.5, and here you see these. Uh, if your computer has the speed and, and uh, capability and the generosity to hurry up and, and give you these th thumbnails, uh, you would see a preview over on the side, and you can also switch over to uh, the mode to view these and uh, uh, to get the uh, information to to uh, see these in Windows Viewer and uh, so forth. So, <coughs> also, uh, I'll point out while I'm here, uh, a lot of people say, you know, when I try to open these up, it opens my files and. Uh, Windows Viewer instead of Photoshop or, you know, opens it up in the wrong version of Photoshop or whatever. Uh, at this point, if you notice this is the Photoshop um, icon associated with a JPEG. If you right-click on it, and this obviously, well, I shouldn't say obviously, it's not obvious to everybody, but this is the wrong version of Photoshop. That This is uh, actually trying to open up. Uh, or would default to open this file in Photoshop CS6. Uh, so if I right click on this and go down to properties, which you can't see because it's off the viewing area, but if I go down to where it says properties and, and I look in here, I can change, see it says uh, opens with Photoshop CS6. I can go to change and say that I, I want this to be associated with something else. So I can I can browse uh, for whatever uh, piece of software I want that to open up with. So I can go to Adobe and find uh, my uh, Photoshop uh, Lightroom. If I want it to open up instead in Lightroom, I can have it do that. Or Photoshop CC 2014, uh, wherever in the heck it is right now. Uh, but I can do that. Uh, so, just a little sidebar bit of information. Uh, a lot of people just don't know how to do that. But if you do that, if you associate this file with a, with a particular piece of software, when you double click that file, it will automatically open up in the associated file that you put on it. So, if you right click on it, go down to where it says File or Properties, and then you associate it right here with the particular file type, whatever you assign to it, uh, it will open up automatically in that for you. So just that wasn't that won't cost you even a little bit extra uh, to have that. See now I've <laughs> changed the association accidentally, and now it's going to open up in in Windows. It's just could not clear unknown. Uh, okay, that's neither here nor there. But anyway, I wanted you to see that. So if I, right now, if I go to a uh, browsing bridge uh, and I say that I want to open this file, I just, I can double click it and open that file up and it will open up. Uh, in this particular instance, it's going over here and saying it's open in Photoshop uh, CC 2014 for me right now. Now, um, I can go ahead and uh, do all kinds of things with it. I can crop it uh, and so forth. But I don't have to um, have it go directly in here. I can actually have it open up in uh, Camera Raw if I want to. Um, but normally, JPEGs will just simply open up inside of uh, Photoshop by default. We can change that. We'll get into that later. Uh, we don't need to know that right now. All right. Uh, Photoshop files uh, will traditionally open up in Camera Raw now, I think, in the newer vision, uh, versions. Uh, certainly, if you photograph in Raw, Camera Raw, uh, most newer cameras now will have the option 
for you to, to um, shoot and photograph in RAW. And uh, by default, I think everybody's camera uh, will default in JPEG generally. Uh, the problem with uh, photographing in camera or in JPEG is that the uh, camera is making all the decisions for you. Uh, so if you photograph something <clears throat> and it saves it in uh, JPEG format for you, it's going to uh, sharpen, it's going to uh, do some color adjustments for you, it's going to lighten, darken according to the computer that's in your camera. Uh, so when you look at it in the viewfinder on the back of the uh, camera, it's going to show you what you've captured and, and store it just that way. Uh, if you shoot it in camera raw, uh, you're going to see a JPEG version and it's going to say this is what it looks like and then when you open it up in your camera and you see the raw formula, the raw file, uh, it's not going to look that way because a raw file is the unadorned version of the file. It's not adjusted. It's, it's as it says it is, it's raw. Uh, it's not uh, changed in any way, shape, or form. You have to do that. So a lot of photographers will uh, shoot in both JPEG and RAW. Uh, I shoot a lot of times in nothing but RAW format. Uh, sometimes I shoot in both and I throw one or the other away. Uh, those are totally uh, your call, what you want to photograph in. But uh, I certainly, if I want to sell my photographs, I certainly want to have at least a, a raw copy uh, so I can um, really tweak things. But uh, there's certainly nothing wrong with having JPEGs as well. Anyway, your call, but, but uh, it will default, every camera uh, anymore will default to having JPEG. Um, and then uh, you can always add raw or turn JPEG off and just have RAW. Uh, some uh, cameras, the lower end cameras, will not have RAW format. They do take up a lot of space. RAW, RAW files are very large. So, on to the next. While we're here, I want to show you this nice little navigator up here on the uh, top up here. This should come uh, by default on your computer. The look uh, should be very similar if it's not there, uh, or if you have an older version of Photoshop, uh, I don't know what version of Photoshop uh, the Navigator started appearing in. I know it goes back uh, a number of years, but if it's not showing over here, go to Window and go down to where you see Navigator and pop that booger on. Uh, because this is a really a handy tool. Right now you're seeing this image at only 16.6 percent so this isn't very large so uh, if I go right here this is called the scrubby slider so if I grab it and, and just run it up here you see uh, that's gotten considerably larger but it's still only 50 percent of the actual image if you look down here in the bottom left uh, this image is 43 megabytes in file size, so guess what? It's a, it's a very large file. Um, so uh, when we magnify it like this, you, know, you see that uh, a lot of detail, but uh, it's still not near 100%. Let's let's go down here. I can actually go down here at the bottom left of this screen, and I can change that number to 100 and just hit enter and now that's a hundred percent so I'm gonna hold down the spacebar I'm not gonna do any any tricky stuff I'm just pushing down with my index finger on my left hand to be real tricky and notice it turns into a hand it's called the grabber hand and I'm just gonna click and drag and just move that over so it's not so awkward and balance the picture out a little bit and now this is actually at 100%. But guess what? If we look up here in the navigator, you see all the rest of the image. 
So that's what's cool about the navigator. We can still see uh, what all is in the image. And guess what? We can go up here with that mouse and it turns into the grabber hand inside that navigator area and I can click and look what happens. I can go anywhere inside the image I want to go and look around. And by the way, this young lady that's upside down is my granddaughter. So how cool an image would, would just that be? You know, the little pudgy hand. So she's like seven now. This was a couple of years ago. Uh, she still turns upside down pretty good, but uh, she has changed. Okay, let's just say I'm big on using shortcut keys. So hopefully if you haven't brought a pencil and paper tonight, you can grab one from your friend and neighbor, or you'll certainly bring one uh, next Thursday. Uh, because I really do use a lot of shortcuts. Now, to zoom in and out, uh, probably the most used shortcuts in Photoshop. So I, if I want to make this smaller, here's one thing I can do just using the navigator. I can go to this scrubby slider and go left. That's pretty hard, right? I can go in and out right here. And if I go way up, look what happens. What what are these right here? I'm going to change this. I'm going to turn, turn that on. What's this right here? That, these are squares. See, I'll go a little higher. So can you see these? If I go even higher, see that square right there? Squares. You know what those squares are? Those are pixels. That's what an image is actually made of. Now we're at 3200%. So that's as big as Photoshop can go. It can't, can't magnify any more than 3200%. But that's what all of the, all images that you will ever work on uh, are made up of these squares. And we go out, you can you can see them. There's a square there. They get smaller and smaller. You can see them going away, going away, until you can't see them anymore. But those are pixels. We try to avoid seeing those in our images, so we have to be careful uh, when we're working on our images. And we'll, we'll be mindful of that all our semester long. Okay. The other way of zooming... Uh, in and out is hold down your control key. I'm sorry, uh, if you're on a Macintosh, that's command key, CMD. On, on, a, on a PC, it's CTRL. And then you press, you hold it down, and then you press the minus key. You keep clicking it, makes it smaller. If you want to make it bigger, you keep that same control key or command key down and you press the plus plus button plus and minus those are your your buddies zooming in and out and until you start seeing those pixels again and now we're back to 3200 percent again so control minus or command minus and command plus control plus those are your buddies uh, like I say though the this navigator is handy and I will not punish anybody for using uh, the navigator. It's there for you. So there are lots of ways. That's what you're going to find out during this eight weeks. There are lots of ways to do everything in Photoshop. Lots and lots and lots of ways. Uh, many things in Photoshop have five different ways of doing them. And you say, well, why aren't there just one way so I can learn that one way and be done? Well, some ways are easier for some people to learn and it sticks with them better than other ways. That's the honest to goodness truth. That's the best I can explain it. Some ways just really stick and uh, you'll be happy with that. Other things uh, don't stay as well. 
So I try to teach all the different ways and whatever works for you, grab hold of it and, and run. Okay, so the navigator, it, it can really be your friend. I myself don't like to go up in the image and do much of anything. I really like the keyboard. I do the control minus and the control plus a lot. So every, everybody has uh, their own thing. You also don't have to uh, go up here to the scrubby slider to magnify things. Over here, this is your toolbar on the left hand side. All of these things starting at the top. Let me go through some of these real quick. Uh, the very top one with the arrow head on it, this is the move tool. Uh, the second one down, and, and when I say move tool, uh, it really doesn't come in handy right here. Uh, let me, uh, don't pay any attention to this. I'm, I'm going to make a copy down here. You see this thing that says background over here. This is called the layer palette, and you don't have to remember this right now. We're, I'm just going to show you uh, something, um, and, and you don't have to remember this. I'm just going to uh, uh, make a selection here, and, and this is just strictly, this is strictly, um, for show. This isn't for, for you to remember anything. Um, what I did uh, was make a selection out of something on, on here. Okay. And um, because I want to demonstrate what this move tool will do. Uh, the move tool won't work on this single layer because there's nothing here to move. So I created something here that can be moved. I created this so I can click and move this wherever I want okay it's now this layer one thing so it's named is just uh, my granddaughter's head Emma uh, created like a ball so I can move it anywhere if I turn this layer back on you can see uh, it's now uh, kind of like a bouncing ball so if I uh, change it up a little bit, just create something here that's uh, a little bit different. Oops. Going the wrong way. Let me, let me, let me do something here to kind of give you an idea how what some of these things will will do. It's not very flattering right now, I realize that. Let me show you what some of these things are capable of. Put a little drop shadow behind this here. And we'll make some separation and and now when we move it you can see there's more like a ball shape to it and and there's a shadow so it separates it from what's behind it so I just did that to show you that you know there's lots of things that we're going to be doing and and you can see that uh, it's easy to create things so I'm gonna throw that back away so we're not going to be too confused hopefully that's what the move tool does. It moves things around in your image. Okay, this is the uh, marquee tool, and there's several marquee tools in there, as you can see. If you uh, hold that down, uh, there's things hiding behind there. This defaults to the uh, rectangular marquee tool being on top. The marquee tool basically makes selections. So if I click and drag, uh, it makes a rectangular uh, selection just like that now if I hold the shift key down it makes a perfect square I can't make a rectangle if I let go of the shift key it goes back to making rectangles if I switch this to the elliptical marquee 
it makes elongated uh, goose eggs. If I hold down the shift key, it makes perfect circles. So it will make ellipticals, or if I hold down the shift key, it makes circles. Okay, and then we have the single row marquee tools, and that's all it is. If you if you zoom in, whoops, sorry. If you zoom in, uh, you'll just see a single row horizontally, and then there's a single row vertical. All right, this next one is a lasso tool. The lasso tool is also a selection tool, but you draw with it. And so I go like this. It's like a freehand drawing tool. So I, wherever I draw, uh, it makes a selection. So I can make a selection around the ear. It's not a perfect selection. Uh, if I go on the inside of her nostril here, <coughs> excuse me, uh, and so forth. It's not a perfect uh, selection tool, but it's used a lot because it's a quick way to make a selection. And then it can be uh, made better by various means. Uh, then right here we have what's called the quick selection tool. Uh, quick, control D turns off those selections. Uh, Sorry. And if we hold that down, you'll see one that's called the magic uh, wand tool. If you click with it, it makes selection. There are many people, according to uh, a very famous uh, Photoshop guru, Scott Kelby, uh, it's called the tragic wand because it makes some of the most bizarre, horrible uh, selections. Uh, that you'll ever find as you see here Okay to turn those off again, you can hold down the the control key and hit the letter D as in dog or D select The other way to do it if we hit it here again see how atrocious that selection is uh, You can go to select and deselect and it says control D will do the same thing So you can see how unhandy it is to go up here to do things when all you could do is, or all you have to do is do a keyboard control D. Okay, cropping. Who doesn't do cropping? Uh, if we only want to, um, let's say, get a this of Emma, we can also drag that to, say, there. We can click and move that around. We can double click and finish the crop off. And notice up here we can say to straighten and uh, unconstrained. Uh, depending on what version of Photoshop you have, uh, these can also be changed or they will be different. So let me undo this. Control Alt Z Control Z will undo one time. Control Z, Z will go back several steps. Uh, while we're talking about that, let me show you something over here under the layers palette. Um, I have history already under here. Now, a lot of people, uh, by default, this will not be here. Uh, I don't remember uh, <clears throat> by default what is over here. Uh, Let's see, I know one that is. Let me look real quick and see if I can find it. Paths is normally there. I don't like, uh, I don't use paths a lot, so I don't like it in here. And I don't think channels is normally here, but I do like channels, so I put it over here. Let me show you how to do that. I'm going to throw palette or history away. Actually, I didn't throw my history away. I just hit it because if I threw my history away, all the stuff I'd done had, would have just gone away. Um, so right now I have channels and layers. Um, history lets us see all the things that we've been doing up to so many steps backwards. So if you don't see history over here, again, just go to Windows and down to History. And see what we did a while ago? 
magic wand stuff. Those are the different things that we did already. We used the elliptical. I, I moved the head around, remember, a while ago. Drop shadow, turned it into a bubble-like thing and moved it around. Moved it. So those are the history states. And we'll talk more about history later on as well. I'm going to put that back right in there. See how it says you can drop that in here. And that's really a handy place to have it. By default, I think it allows us to put 30 states in there. And uh, you can have however many states you want it to have. But you've got to kind of keep in mind that uh, it eats up some of your RAM. And uh, so you don't want to overdo it. I like to keep around 50 states. Um, that lets you go backwards 50 times. And remember what, what I said earlier. When I first started in Photoshop, you could only go back one move. And if you inadvertently clicked your mouse, that was one move. And uh, you were stuck with whatever you did. So we can undo the crop and go back. Isn't that wonderful to be able to do that? We can go back to where we did that last magic wand and so forth. So very powerful tool. Can't, can't even begin to imagine trying to do without that. Let's go back to where we had uh, more of Emma in the image. Oh, and you can go all the way back up here. This is the original image. If you want to undo everything that you've done, you can go all the way back to when where you first started. That's a wonderful thing too. Okay, let's back here. All right. Uh, this is the eyedropper tool. The eyedropper uh, lets you go out in the image and watch the color right here. This is your color picker right down here. This is the foreground color on top. Behind it is the background color. If I click here, notice the nice pink color. If I click in her eye, yeah, look at the colors. Nice blue there. Blue there. I don't know where I was getting that green from because there we go. Uh, flesh tone out here. See? But nice rosy color in the cheeks. Okay. So that's the color picker. This, on the other hand, is the healing brush tool. If we've got, uh, look, look at this area right here, kind of a red blemish uh, right here. It's a little, you know, kind of a harshish look. So if we go right around this area right here and we kind of drag it up to an area that's good, look at that. So <laughs> can you see any uses for this tool? Spot healing brush. Uh, healing brush patch tool is what this basically uh, stands for. Uh, great uh, content aware move tool. We'll get into that later. And the red eye tool. Uh, it's great if you've uh, got a photograph where the eyes turn out red. It's obvious what that will do. Here's your paintbrush tool. So we got this nice flesh color down here. We've got uh, here's our brush palette up here and notice I have a lot of brushes. These aren't here by default I've got a lot of extra brushes uh, You'll have basically this first couple of rows in here first four rows or so uh, But if I paint here, it's painting with this color right here All right <laughs> So I'm gonna undo that control Z undoes that painting uh, You've got some other brushes in here if you click and hold that down there's the pencil, color replacement, and the mixer brush tool. The mixer brush tool is uh, came along, oh, I'm going to say three versions ago, seems like. Uh, it allows you to actually do painting uh, in your images in Photoshop. It can be really, really great. And this is the rubber stamp tool. It's been around forever inside of Photoshop. It will allow you to um, heal problems inside of Photoshop. Like right here is a little problem area. Sorry about that. <clears throat> I'm going to make this bigger. Um, 
notice, remember if, that I said a while ago you can do a control plus to make things larger. What about if I want to zoom in in a particular area like right there? Well, I can hold down my control key, my space bar, and that turns on this wonderful tool right here, the magnifying glass, and I can click right on that. And again, and that looks like just a little bit of a, a pimple. So control space bar turns on the magnifying glass and lets me click on anything I want to make it bigger. Control space bar. <clears throat> so I've got my a uh, rubber stamp and I want my brush size to be about the same size as this. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Now on my keyboard <clears throat> right over next to the letter P is uh, what's called, are what's called, the bracket keys. Left and right bracket. The bracket keys make our brushes smaller and larger. Left bracket key makes the brush smaller. Right bracket key makes the brush larger. So I'm going to make it larger. Right bracket key. That's about right right there. So I'm going to go over here to sample pretty much the same area. I hold down my left or my uh, alt key turns into a sample area. That's a little sample brush or a little sample designator. I click once, come back over to the bad area. See, this is the clean stuff it's going to fill it with and let go. Now, you don't see that it did much, right? That's because if you look up here, it says 26%. That's not enough. We're going to raise that up. Now you can have it on 100% and watch what happens. We'll sample up here again. Bang. Gone completely. Never knew it was there. Ideally, I'm going to do a Control Z to undo that. Ideally, you want to bring this back or cover it up a little at a time. So let's do a Control, I mean an Alt, sorry, to sample, click once, and then click, click, and that looks pretty good. Let's zoom out. I'm going to do a control minus. Do you see that bad place? Nope, it's gone. If we go back over here in our history, go back one, two, three, and there it is. See it? Now you can really see it. Put these, go back forward, it's gone. So isn't that great what the rubber stamp tool can do? Go to the next one. We have a history brush tool, an art history brush tool. We'll get into those much later. Eraser. It does just what it says. It will erase things. That's basically erasing everything that's on that layer. So we don't really want to do that. Uh, that's the opacity. If we turn that opacity up to 100%, now look when we erase, it's erasing completely. We can make the brush bigger and erase. Okay, if I erase or do a control Z once, it didn't go back far enough. If I go control Z again, it puts it back down. So I have to go back two steps. So it's control alt Z. See how it went back? Multiple steps over here in the history palette. Control Alt Z. All right. Now the next one is called the gradient tool, and up here is the gradient editor. So if we turn on the gradient tool and click on the gradient editor, we have you won't have all of these gradients either. Sorry, but you can load <clears throat> lots of gradients, just like in the brushes. I didn't mention that a while ago. I said that uh, you didn't have all these brushes, but if you go up here, you can load all of these brushes. They're already in your Photoshop. All you have to do is click on uh, Load Brushes, and it will uh, let you go in and add. Actually, you go to uh, click on these brushes here, and then say Append, and it'll load those brushes for you. 
Uh, my advice is don't load, <clears throat> excuse me, any brushes unless you want them for sure. No, you need them uh, because it's going to really <clears throat> uh, clutter things up. Now, if you notice, I just threw all those brushes away except for the ones I just said. So if I want to load brushes up, let's see, I want my basic brushes. I'm going to say a pinned. So these are the basic brushes. So if I want more special brushes, a pinned. If I want more, uh, let's say I want the dry media brushes, a pinned. So then you get all kinds of different brushes. Okay. Same thing down here where we are on the gradients. If you up here on the gradient editor and you want more brushes, click on this. And all of these, if you click on here, say a pinned. Okay. <clears throat> and all of these things, when you're in them, can be um, edited. So I'm just clicking and I can edit the, the way these colors interact. I can change this color by, uh, let's put one down here and I can double click it, click there to change that color. I want to change it to another color. So let's see what that's going to look like if I use that. And I can click and drag and there it is. That's what that gradient looks like. We don't want it over our top of our image but you still see what it looks like. So there's different kinds of gradients and you also have the paint bucket. So if I click, you see how it's filling with this color here. Let's go back here. And right here we have uh, some really neat tools. We have the uh, blur tool, sharpen tool and smudge tool. So the blur tool, if we use it, let's zoom in on her eye. I'm going to make this bigger. Can you see what's happening to her eye? That's right. I blurred it. If we click back here in the history, see what happened? It cleaned it back up again because we undid all those states. If I go to the next one, we're sharpening. So I'm going to make this bigger. Looks terrible, doesn't it? So you got to be careful about some of these tools that you use. And then the next one, smudge. So we can make the brush bigger so you can actually see what it does. Oh, you can have some fun with these tools. You can also destroy. All right. Just like in the um, darkroom, you have dodge and burn tools. So you can actually make things lighter. And you can make things darker. Do those. And you can actually saturate Turn those off. The pen tools uh, are a little bit different. We'll talk about these more later on. We don't need those right now. Text tools. We click and type inside of uh, Photoshop documents. We actually creates its own layer. If we go up to the layers palette, you can see now we have a new text layer that has that information on it. And right here, these are the path selection tools that actually work hand in hand with the paths that are created using this pen tool. Now these are, uh, oh, I'm trying to, I can't remember what version of Photoshop these particular tools came out in, but these tools are very, very special. Um, because everything inside of, uh, let me go back to this image and, and 
make it full screen. Um, images inside of Photoshop are what's called raster graphics. They, um, image files are made up of data that, uh, as we pointed out a while ago, um, if you go big like this, let me get this tool here. You can see the actual pixel right there. And there, each one of these is a pixel. Each bit of data here is a pixel. All images, all raster images are made up of pixels. <clears throat> so uh, they're very finite in that they're made up of, of these pixels. And, and we, when we work on them, uh, they can fall apart very easily if we're not careful. They can start to pixelate which means that we start seeing these pixels and they start looking really rough, really uh, pretty bad looking. They can, uh, you, you might have seen it before where people will work on a JPEG image, which you should never do. Uh, you should never go into Photoshop and start working on a JPEG image and close it and then open it back up and work on it again and then close it and work on it again and close it. Uh, that's a lot like working on a uh, Xerox of a Xerox of a Xerox because when you have problems, <clears throat> you're only exacerbating uh, that problem uh, because you're working on mistakes and, and making more mistakes of mistakes. Uh, <clears throat> uh, a JPEG image is what's called a lossy, L-O-S-S-Y, format, which means that when you save that file, the formula in the file actually takes similarities and will throw out digital information based on similarities. And when you open it back up, it repopulates the file with those similarities not exact likenesses but similarities so the flaws tend to get bigger and more pronounced whereas if you save a something in a photoshop file it's a pure file it doesn't uh, it doesn't get uh, compressed digital data isn't thrown away and remanufactured as it is in a lossy file format like a JPEG. <clears throat> so whenever you're going to work on an image, whether it's just come out of your camera or not, you should always turn it into a Photoshop file. So if I've downloaded a, a like this image of Emma, if I've downloaded that from my camera, the first thing I need to do to work on it is first to change it in, you know, to go up here and do a file, save as, and change this to Emma, and make sure it doesn't say Photoshop, or doesn't say JPEG, it says PSD file, and save that thing. Uh, as a PSD file and then when I come back and work on it it's going to be a perfect file not a JPEG file because it is a raster based image it's not going to uh, it's it is going to fall apart <coughs> excuse me and anything we can do to keep it from getting worse we must do that on the other hand we have these wonderful tools that are made from numerical formulas. They never get bad. No matter what you do to them, they stay pure because they are vector-based ba graphics. And all vector graphics are uh, mathematical formulas. No matter <clears throat> what you do to these, they never get worse. They never pixelate. Uh, they just don't get worse. So if I do a Control-T to this, 
and resize it, it will stay the same. If I make it huge, it will stay the same. If I make it tiny, it will stay the same. It will stay perfect. If I make this picture of Emma tiny, she will get worse. If I make the picture of Emma huge, she will get worse. Not so with the vector graphics. So whenever we work on uh, these particular items, and there are lots of them, if we click this one down here, custom shape, and we go up here to shapes, this is another one of those. You won't have all of those in there, but if you click right here, uh, all of these can be loaded. You just sim simply click on append again. Uh, <clears throat> and all of these uh, can be loaded into your computer. And they can be, you know, some great things done with them. And you can, you know, define all kinds of things dealing with these shapes. And like I say, they will never get bad. They will, they will not uh, get worse. No matter what you do with them, they, they will look great. And it's, that's the cool thing about a vector graphic, which uh, there are lots of other programs out there that, uh, like Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, creates and works with vector graphics. So <clears throat> something else, and, and you notice that when we create a vector graphics using this particular tool, and this is uh, one of the newer tools in Photoshop, uh, goes back maybe three versions, uh, this also creates a new layer. I'm going to throw those layers away. I'm just hitting the delete key on my keyboard because uh, we don't need those right now. Then we've got the hand tool here, uh, as it says. And another one that so underused, so underused. Uh, let me create a new layer here. And I'm going to, this is going to be an exact copy of the background layer. And <clears throat> this is real simple to do, to make an exact copy. You might want to write this down, Control J. Uh, makes an exact perfect copy of this layer. I'm going to turn the bottom one off, the one that we've been using. Don't even notice it, right? Because the exact copy is right there. Right? They're the same. All right. Let's say that I want to see her eyes looking out at me. Uh, I'm just going to click and, and rotate that around. Because what if I wanted to work on her eyes? To work on them uh, like this, sorry, I rotated the whole thing. Um, <laughs> I'm going to undo that. Control-Z, Control-Alt-Z. Oops. I rotated the canvas, and I, I can't unrotate it except to me undo. Oops. Control-Z. I'm going to rotate it back. And then holding down the shift key to get it back. Uh, if if her eyes are like this, I'm not comfortable working on them. Uh, and I'll show you in a second what I mean by working on them. Um, <clears throat> but all I have to do is go down here, or I can hit the letter R on my keyboard, which I usually prefer to do. I just hit the letter R. And then I can spin her around any way I want to and work on her face. And then when I'm done, Working on, let's say I want to brighten her eyes up. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. <clears throat> and I'm going to select her eyes. So I'm going to use that lasso tool. And no, they're not perfect. This is just demo purposes. I'm going to do a control J. And guess what? Nothing but her eyes are on that layer. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to tweak her eyes a little bit. You say, well, you're affecting everything. Yeah, I am. But if I go right here, I'm only affecting her eyes. 
Let's see what I can do. Now, obviously we got this goofy looking ghost ring around him, right? So I can go over here and paint right in here. And don't worry about remembering this stuff, okay? Not right now. We're going to paint with a paintbrush. And I've thrown all my brushes away, so I have to find... I did that on accident. I'm going to get a soft brush and... I gotta make sure it's on soft. See, if the hardness is all the way to the left, zero percent, that means it's soft. Okay. So now I can go up here, and I'm gonna make her eyes bigger. So I'm holding down the control key and the space bar, and I'm gonna paint right on here with black, which makes that stuff go away. Go over to this other eye. So I only want to affect the blues. Now let's go down on the eyes. And let's see what we've actually done to the eyes. Turn that off. Turn it on. You think that made any difference? Yeah, a bit, right. Now if you don't like it, I mean, we can certainly uh, throw that away in a hurry, right? But I don't think it hurt anything. And we can always uh, throw it away, start over, or we can enhance it even more. I'm going to bring this layer down to this layer. And let's just do a control E. So now it's just this layer controlling that. And we can also go up here to this, and we can bring this in, and this in, and you say again, you're affecting everything. Yes, I am, but I changed that. Now you say, you've really gone over the top. Maybe. But that's the thing about it. That's that's the fun. You know, you, you can do whatever you want to do and try it out and see what it looks like. <clears throat> and you can undo it. Maybe that is too much. <laughs> but that's the beauty of it. We can also go in here and take it back down. Now let's see what we've got. That's crazy. Did I do that? Let's get that back up. I got it turned off. That's why I couldn't see what I was doing. Now, let's see what we've got. I'm going to sandwich these two together again. Sorry about that. Control E. Now, there's how far we've come. And you say, well, that, that is, that's too far. Well, if it is, all we have to do, and this is called a layers mask. I'm going to put that on here. And again, you don't have to remember this. We're just going to paint in a little gray. And it looks black, but I'm going to paint with black, but the brush is going to be only partially opaque. So um, here's what I'm going to do. Got a big old brush here. And I'm just going to make a swath over her eyes. And you're not going to probably see too much. It's going to happen gradually. See over here a little bit of gray starting to show? Now you're seeing a little bit more subtlety there. See, a lot less blue now. If I turn around, 
and paint with white. I'm going to change this brush to 100%. Watch what happens. <laughs> now all of the blue is back in. And now I'm going to paint with black at 100%. And all, all of that's back out again. See, there's no no difference. So you can control exactly how much of that blue is in there. And then we'll switch it to white. So you get to control that. We'll go a little bit more. I like it right there. So I can hit the R button again and turn her around. And, and it doesn't just pop sometimes right to where it should be. So if it doesn't, hold down the shift key and it'll pop right where it belongs. And now let's turn that back off and see. There's where it was. There's where we brought it to. If it bothers you to go that far with color, you say that's just not natural. Um, then you don't have to do it, obviously. We can clean up tennis shoes. We can, you know, like uh, on here, we, we can whiten the tennis shoes up real good, real quick. Uh, you can, you know, fuss with anything you want to in a, in a photograph. Uh, it's, you know, it's your world. Uh, you can have control over all of those things. We've gone through a majority of the tools. <clears throat> this color picker over here is a very powerful thing, and I wanted you to understand it. The The foreground, as we've already mentioned, I've, I've already mentioned uh, right here, if we click it, it brings up this very powerful color picker. And we have the uh, red, green, and blue colors right here. Use saturation brightness up here. Uh, CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, black. Uh, so all of these um, things are at your disposal. You can also have web colors turned on. If you're a webmaster and you really have to watch your colors, this could be a good thing to do. Uh, you can control or change the colors based on this slider here. <clears throat> you can, con you know, tweak your colors very easily going through here um, once you pick a color click OK then if you want to and I'm on a mask right now so let's just click a new layer this is the new layer icon um, so let's pick a blue and then we'll switch colors and now the whites on top will go down here and get a yellow so you see the yellow is now our foreground and you see our background color down here at the bottom this is our mask um, this is a bit different this is called the quick mask if we click on it <clears throat> you'll see that now I think this comes by default with this middle clicked uh, I suggest that if it is to change it to selected areas <coughs> and you'll see why uh, later on probably uh, we don't need to tackle that today uh, but what I do is when I paint uh, in uh, using a mask uh, I paint let me let me undo that real quick um, Let's just do a mask real quick. Uh, I just hit the letter Q on my keyboard. If you look up here real quick, you'll see that this changed to quick mask. So now if I paint, let me zoom in on her eye. If I paint, and I'm using my left bracket key, if I paint, I'm now painting with what's called in the old um, print shops newspaper days with ruby lith i'm only painting with 25 percent so that didn't 
work quite well. You can see through RubyLith. You can see I painted that. Uh, and then when you hit Q again, the letter Q on your keyboard, it turns into a mask or a selection, sorry. So this is another selection tool. Uh, what happens when you have an area that's selected? Let me zoom back out. I'm going to use Control minus. If I try to paint right now with the paintbrush, and let's say I'm going to paint with yellow, <clears throat> I can't paint anywhere. I'm painting, 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 but nothing's happening. But if I paint through her eye, I can actually paint. And the reason why? The eye is right here is the only thing that's selected. Let's do a control undo, control Z. Again, I paint, nothing's happening, but if I paint there, it's the only thing selected. Control undo. So if I make a selection over here, and again, I paint here, and paint here, that's selected so I can paint in here. So if you're having a problem and you can't figure out why, sometimes the very smallest selections can be made in your image and your tools won't work and you can't figure out what's going on. My Photoshop won't work. It's sometimes it's a good idea to go to select, deselect. And then, if there's anything that's selected and you can't see it, it'll turn that off and then things start working again. So you might kind of keep that in mind. All right. Here's an image that I'm posting that you might want to practice your selection tools on. Uh, <clears throat> selections can be a little tricky sometimes. Uh, we've gone through the different tools, but we went through them kind of fast. Uh, so let me demonstrate some of the ways that, that I would make selections. Uh, let's go down to the quarter, for, for example. So I'm going to hold down my control key and my space bar to turn this uh, into a magnifying glass. And I'm going to click once and just kind of let it zoom itself. <clears throat> just kind of hold it down and it'll, it'll do its own thing, so to speak. And this quarter... Is it is probably one of the easier things to make a selection of, but to make a perfect selection uh, can sometimes be a little more difficult. So what I like to do uh, in practicing and showing other people how to practice making selections, here is here is the logical uh, tool to make a, a selection with the uh, elliptical marquee tool. So. We grab it and then just click and, and drag a circle. And you see that you can move, once you let go, you can move that around. Well, obviously, we're close uh, with that selection, but it's, it's not right on the, the money. I turned the recording off a second uh, just to get rid of some things over there in the panel. Uh, I'm going to try again. This time, uh, I'm going to do a Control D to turn off those marching ants. And this, I know that's kind of a strange name to, to call those, but if you watch it, they move. And and somebody described them as looking like ants uh, marching, following each other. So they got the name Marching Ants. So anyhow, what I do is click and drag and get it close and don't let go with the mouse. <clears throat> now, since this is pretty much a, a perfect circle, you want to hold down the shift key and then use the space bar, hold the space bar down, don't let go with the mouse. I'm I'm keeping the left mouse key button down. I know this is a little difficult to see because of the background colors and everything. And I'm letting go with the uh space bar or the space bar and I'm dragging a little bit more. I move the space bar key back down again or pushed it down. And now I'm shoving it with the mouse up a little bit. Now I'm dragging it a little bit more. 
lift the mouse or the keyboard a little bit more <clears throat> and you got to kind of play with this a little bit I'm going to let go with my left mouse key and there's the selection I came up with so we're still a little bit off over here on the left not bad here a little bit too much in the white over here so I'm gonna just click here once and try again so I just generally I'm not doing anything on my keyboard right now I'm just gonna click and drag and now I hold down my shift key to make a perfect circle now I'm using my thumb or actually I'm using my little pinky to hold down my shift key using my thumb on the the uh, spacebar and moving it up to the edge of the coin now I'm over in a couple of areas so I'm letting go of the spacebar with my thumb and I'm shoving with my left mouse I'm kinda of moving my mouse back a little bit okay now I'm bringing it down with my spacebar held down let go of my spacebar shoving it up a little bit dragging it to the right drag it up spacebar down dragging it spacebar up dragging it to the left with my mouse come on go in a little finicky I'm gonna let go with my mouse and now I'm gonna just click and drag inside of it it's not bad cutting in a little bit here oh I'm way too far in over here so see even I have issues with this it's basically because I've got so much light <clears throat> reflecting over here on these edges against a white background it's hard to see these marching ants okay I'm dragging out again I've got my left mouse held down I'm going to hold down my shift key to make it perfectly round my thumb is on the space bar drag it up I want this top lined up first and now I'm letting go with the space bar dragging the mouse to the right I'm way too far at the bottom so I'm gonna run let go with the space bar and run my mouse upwards and out to the right come on it's not going anywhere try again spacebar I don't know if I do better when I'm not talking it does act squirrely sometimes Mm, not quite. I'm zoom out just a little bit. Getting closer. I want to try it without the shift key. You know, that's about it right there. Yeah, I did it without the shift key down, and I pretty well got it nailed right there so maybe that's the trick alright here's what I need to do I've, I think I've got a pretty good selection and I'm gonna do a control J now what I did by doing a control J look I turn this layer off right here and I've got my quarter on its own layer now if I use my move tool I can move my quarter wherever I want to looks almost perfectly identical right so my selection wasn't really bad all right I gotta make sure I'm back on my background layer to make my next selection so let me zoom back in so control minus <clears throat> so I can see more of my overall image let's go after the round to it over here this nice big red round to it there's a couple of ways I can think real quickly on how to get the round to it so first I'm going to use this one so let's try it the way we just did that one I'm just going to click and drag without using the 
um, shift key and that's not bad and let's try the control J turn off the background looks pretty good move tool turn this one back on looks pretty good now turn this background back on I'm gonna turn these two layers back off that's the beauty of layers I mean we can do all kinds of things with it turn it off turn it on and make sure you're back on your background so you're not working on the wrong thing that's crucial but how else could we select that round to it uh, real quickly you think I think I called it the tragic wand at some point but all of that nice red color might be easily uh, grabbed by this magic wand let's see what happens well it's getting some of that text and and all that so maybe that's not the perfect way how about the quick selection tool let's do a control D let's see if we can let's see if we can get a bigger brush <coughs> and that's key on this quick selection tool is have a nice brush look at that popped right in there let's do a control J turn this layer off perfect so more than one way to skin a cat right I wonder if there's anything else we can use the quick selection tool on but there is control minus get a bigger look at this How about this gotta be on the right layer see what I did then I'm on the round to it that I just made a copy of and it's turned off too so it couldn't even select that need to be on the right layer or I can't select that rock there is so much contrast whoops nope that didn't do good too big let's try it now got it what about this got it got it Oop, not there that's going to be a problem on some you can fudge whoops wrong wrong key there what about this especially the black this gets a little harder in there how can you overcome that well what if we magnify the heck out of that hold down your control key and your space bar and zoom way in what do we need smaller brush right tiny brush gotta be careful yep yeah, it's going too far gotta be careful this is a fantastic tool for selections if you go too far like right there hold down the alt key see how it turned into a minus sign that's right you didn't get enough of that one just hit that again we come down here I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this but you see how you can overcome control minus to zoom back out how about this will it work on this I think it will yep this too uh-huh it'll get on this how about this why won't it uh oh bigger problems again <clears throat> just have to have the right size too big a brush got it remember once you uh, get the selection made uh, control J off that to make your different layers this is a great way to practice getting selections remember if you go too far you use your alt key turn that into a minus and it learns gang it learns it gets smarter as it goes 
So that's how you work with those tools and make selections. Practice on this sheet. It'll be posted up there, uh, and you can practice all the day long. This is how to get good with selections. Selections in Photoshop are crucial. Get familiar with these tools, and you will soon be an ace with selections in Photoshop. Talk to you all later. This has been a good first lesson for me, and I hope for you as well. Bye-bye.